Now we come to the last chapter of 2 Chronicles. It's been a long journey, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. So, we are looking at the last 23 years of the nation of Judah before they were exiled. And we shall see what happened. Then, the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's house, in his father's place in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. Three months? So short. Financially, it's called one quarter. So short, three months. Now the king of Egypt disposed him at Jerusalem. For obvious reason, right? Because actually I've got no trouble with you. Since you trouble, trouble, trouble will trouble you, right? So now, hey, now who is the boss now? Josiah is dead, the son. So let him reign for three months and then the king of Egypt disposed him. Not only that, and imposed on the land a tribute of 100 talents of silver and a talent of gold. Now, this is a reversal of fortune, if we can put it that way. In the time of blessing, all the surrounding nations, even the Philistines and others, that they were giving tribute to Jerusalem, right? But now it's the reverse. You are under a curse. You have been disobedient. So instead, now they were to give tribute to the king of Egypt. And though in chapter 36, no detail was given, nothing was given about what this Jehovah A.S. did. Let's look at the first, no, second Kings 23, just to recap. Second Kings 23. Verse 32. And you know, Chronicles is from God's perspective. He will see the good and, and, and uh, not highlight the bad. Now, so, 2 Kings 23, verse 32. Okay, let me read from verse 31. Now, Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah the Lip of Libna. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord according to all that his fathers had done, the bad fathers had done. And Pharaoh, Nico, put him in prison at Ribla in the land of Haman. So, you go back to chapter 36, 2 Chronicles. Then you know why the king of Egypt disposed him at Jerusalem. Because God made it so. God allowed it to be. Because Jehoahaz had done evil like his fathers. That's why his reign was only three months. <clears throat> Verse 4. Then the king of Egypt made Jehoahaz's brother Eliakim king over Judah and Jerusalem and changed his name to Jehoiakim and Nico took Jehoahaz his brother and carried him off to Egypt so Jehoahaz you follow me you go Egypt we see the pyramid okay your brother Jehoiakim they stay here and rule now you notice the change of name and in those days, it's very typical. It is a mark of authority. It is to tell you, I am boss. Yeah? Now you are my subject. You are my puppet king. I put you there to be king. I change your name. So I have authority over you. That's what you mean. And now if you look at Daniel, Daniel chapter 1, I mean, this, this also happened around that time. 
no, not around. It was later after they were exiled. Daniel chapter one verse six. Amongst later when we we look at Israel, the the first group that went into exile into Babylon. In verse six, chapter one. Now, from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and so on and so forth. And then verse seven. To them, the chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave that means the Babylonians. He gave Daniel the name of Belshazzar. Okay, he gave the name Belshazzar. Very hard to pronounce. But that was a Babylonian name. And then you look to Hananiah, to Shadrach, to Hananiah. The name changed to Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. That was a sign of authority that we have rule over you. We don't want you to use a Jewish name. Use a Babylonian name. Okay. So back to chapter thirty-six. Here you see Jehoi Akim. Now, taking the place of the throne, taking the throne. Jehoi Akim was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And if you were Jehoi Akim, you you would know what not to do, right? The least you could do. Follow your dad, lah, Josiah. But instead, I mean, he didn't understand why his brother Jehoahaz is now in Egypt. He should know. But anyway, he did evil, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord his God. So sin, sin got no logic. You understand? Sin got no logic. Why do you put the knife in his back? Why do you take the thing from the shelf? No, no, I want it. You know, no, no logic. Yeah. Why the guy cut into your leg? You press the hot gap on the road and beat him up. No logic. Why? No. So, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against him and bound him in bronze fetters to carry him off to Babylon. So he thought in the eleven years that he was doing, he was reigning here. This Egyptian king is happy with his brother. He can do what he like. He forgot from not also got enemy. So Babylon king, Babylonian king came. Nebuchadnezzar came and bound him in bronze fetters and carried him off to Babylon. Now this journey. Takes at least four months from here. I mean, we all walk free and easy. We went Israel, right? Walk free and easy. You try next time you go Israel, you walk on with bronze fetters, yeah. Bind, bind your legs and your hands and see how you walk. Okay, you go this way, then all the way here, very long. Okay, they couldn't go through here because this was the desert, so it was a long march. Very long. Bound him in bronze fetters and carried him off to Babylon. This was in the year six zero five BC. Later, I will have the the tables and all those for you. Nebuchadnezzar also carried off some of the articles from the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Why? Because some years back, his people came and they they didn't spy. They were shown the treasures, right? So they took note of what articles were there. Now Nebuchadnezzar came and he took them, removed all these articles, and brought back to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon, from the house of God to a pagan temple. Terrible. Now, in this first deportation, bringing people back 
not bad. Bring people into exile to Babylon. In this first group was Daniel, which we just read just now, Daniel chapter 1. Daniel was in the first group of exile. And in case you can't remember where was uh, where was it found when Hezekiah shown the treasure, Second Kings chapter twenty. Second Kings twenty, uh, you will read verse thirteen, I think. You read about Hezekiah showing all the treasures, and this was in the last fifteen years of his life. Remember, he asked God to extend his life, which God did. He became proud. He fathered a son, Manasseh. And then he also showed the treasures to the Babylonians. Verse 8. Now, the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, the abominations which he did, and what was found against him, indeed they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Then Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his place. If you remember, when we started First Chronicles, I had the map if you have downloaded. I showed you all the tables, right? The king, so you follow the table, the, the names are all there. So now, from Jehoiakim, he comes Jehoiachin. He was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months and ten days. You turn with me to Second Kings 20. 2 Kings 24 Verse 8 2 Kings 24 Verse 8 Before this was Jehoi Akim who was taken away taken away by Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon. So now in verse 8, chapter 24, Jehoi Achin was 18 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. Eight? Eight months. Error, right? Yeah. Here is 18 years, but in Second Chronicles it was eight years. He was eight years old when he became king. So anyway, uh, if you read the center margin, uh, it was the scraps era. The scrap are tired and forgot to go on more stroke. Okay. It should be 18 years. So Joy Achin was 18 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem three months and ten days. And he did evil in the sight of of the law. Dean ages also can do evil. You know that, right? Yeah. We see a lot of teenagers. At the turn of the year, King Nebuchadnezzar summoned him and took him to Babylon. So, the second deportation. Second deportation. This time, he took this Johoi Achin summoned him and took him to Babylon with the costly articles from the house of the Lord. So apparently, there, are, there were many articles in the house of the Lord. So first deportation took some, second deportation took some more. This was in 597 BC. 597 BC. And made Jedah Kair, Jehoi Akim's brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem. So Jedekiah was the last king of Judah before they were taken into exile. Jedekiah was 21 years old when he became king and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, his God, and did not humble himself before Jeremiah the prophet who spoke from the mouth of the Lord. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear an oath by God. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to the Lord God of Israel. Now, he should have been smarter, 
knowing that eh, one brother here, one brother there, another brother just went, he should behave himself. But, but not. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. And so God sent Jeremiah the prophet to come and warn him and told him, submit to the instructions of King Nebuchadnezzar. Don't fight against him because this is the Lord's will. Because your people have disobeyed. So God is punishing them. So don't fight against Nebuchadnezzar. But this guy is crazy. In verse 13, he rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar. Let's turn to Jeremiah 27. Jeremiah 27. Verse 12. Jeremiah 27, verse 12. Jer Jeremiah wrote, I also spoke to Jedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon, and serve him and his people, and live. So, the king of Babylon, submit yourself. You and your people submit to the king of Babylon and you shall live. Because God wants you out of this place. Why will you live? You know, why will you die, you and your people, by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, as the Lord had spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon? Therefore, do not listen to the words of the prophets. These were the false prophets. These prophets will gather around the king and say sweet niceties to the king. What the king want to hear. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who speak to you saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesied a lie to you. For I have not sent them, says the Lord. Yet they prophesied a lie to my name, that I may drive you out and that you may perish, you and your prophets who prophesy to you. God wanted them to live. And the way, the only way to live is what? To submit themselves to the king of Babylon and go with them. Because God wanted the land to rest. We shall read. So, where are we? Okay, verse 13, we finish. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. Verse 13, he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to the Lord God of Israel. Moreover, all the leaders of the priests and the people transgress more and more according to all the abominations of the nations and defiled the house of the Lord which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. At least a Manasseh at the end of his life, he repented. When he was in prison and so on, he repented. But these people, they transgress more and more. Verse 15, And the Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Now, rising up early and sending them, that means that it was a sense of urgency. God sent His messengers. Now, go, hurry up, go and warn them. Go and remind mm -hmm. them. See, God is long-suffering, desiring that no one should perish. He is full of mercy and compassion. Mm -hmm. Right here. Because He had compassion on His people and on His dwelling place. That was His temple. You, you guys are showing disrespect. But they mock the messengers of God, despise His words, and scoff at His prophets until the wrath of the Lord rose against His people till there was underlying my Lord. No remedy. Sorry, no cure. Right? We, we grew up with this. Sorry, no cure. There was no remedy. It was really, really 
a point of no return. And this was almost, you know, like, like the, 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 the peak of their disobedience. And worst thing, it was led by the king, the king leading the way. So, I'm pointing out, I'm going to point out to you two reasons for their exodus, <coughs> for their exile. The first was because of idolatry, because they continued to transgress more and more. They disobeyed the word and, and so on, and defiled the house and so on. And God said, He had compassion, not only on His people, but also on His dwelling place. You guys are idolaters. So first reason for their exile is idolatry. Second reason coming up. Verse 17. Therefore, He brought against them the king of the Chaldeans. Who are the Chaldeans? The Babylonians. Another name for the <coughs> Babylonians, Chaldeans. Therefore, he brought against them the king of the Chaldeans who killed their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary. In the place of worship, they were killed. And these were young men. Young men killed. That means future is a big challenge. Okay? They represent the future. And had no compassion on young men or virgin, on the aged or the weak. He gave them all into his hand. And all the articles from the house of God, great and small, the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and of his leaders. All this he took to Babylon. You seem to have lots and lots of treasures. Now the third deportation, third deportation, again they took the treasures. And this all happened on the 18th of July, 586. 18th of July, 586. Now, 586 BC is a date that most people don't know. If you know a little bit about the, the history of Israel and so on, that was the day the temple was burned down. Nebuchadnezzar and his people came, raised the place to the ground, and then they took the people up north to Babylon, 586 BC. And until today, there is still no temple in Jerusalem. What is sitting on Mount Moriah is a mosque. So the Jews are waiting for the day when they can erect a temple, their temple, God's temple on the same location. And from what I was told and I read, they have prepared all the necessary articles for the temple. Now they just wait for the time when they can go and build the temple. Verse 19, Then they burned the house of God, broke down the wall of Jerusalem. Burned the house of God. It is like someone come to number 30 Chai Chi Street uh, and burn down this place, it hits you where it hurts the most, right? Of course, it pains God the most. Next, they tore down the wall. That was their defense of the city. Tore down the wall, made them so vulnerable. And that's why when Nehemiah came back, the first thing he did was what? Rebuild the wall. Burn all mm. its palaces with fire and destroyed all his precious possessions. Now Solomon must be having crying somewhere. Wow, my palace, my palace. And all those who escaped from the sword, he carried away to Babylon. Those who didn't die went to Babylon, where they became servants to him and his sons until the rule of the kingdom of Persia. Until the rule of the kingdom of Persia. Now, at this point in time, who was in power? The Babylonians. Babylonians. But later, later, the Persians. Persians, uh, today, they, the Iranian and all this. Later, they overtook <coughs> Babylonians and then Persia became the world power. That's why it is written here. Until they served King Nebuchadnezzar and his sons, until the rule of the kingdom of Persia. To fulfill 
the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed its Sabbath. As long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. So, the second reason for their exile is because they have not been given observing Sabbath for the land. We turn to Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25, verse 4 and 5. Leviticus 25, verse 4. This chapter 25 is about the seventh year. But in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land. A Sabbath to the Lord, you shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. What grows of it, of its, what grows of its own accord of your harvest, you shall not reap nor gather the grapes of your untended vine. For it is a year of rest for the land. And the Sabbath produce of the land shall be food for you and your servants and so on. So on the seventh year, give the land a break. Because, I mean, I don't know about all this kind of uh, 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 agricultural thing, but for the land to replenish the minerals and the whatever. But the people did not. And God knew that they would not. And so in Leviticus 25, He gave the instruction, give the land a rest. Right? On the seventh year, don't go and do harvesting and do all this. No, just eat what, take what you need to eat. But the rest, leave it alone. Okay? Now, then you go to 26. Verse 20, let me see, uh, uh, 34, sorry, Leviticus 36 to 34. Okay. Chapter 26, verse 34, sorry. Chapter 26, verse 34. And this section here is about disobedience. Chapter 26 of Leviticus talks about blessings for obedience. Punishment for disobedience. And in verse 34, God knew in advance. So gave them a warning. 34, then the land... Okay, verse 33, let me read. I will scatter you among the nations and draw out a sword after you. Your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Now, this was the Leviticus. They haven't even come to Deuteronomy. You know Deuteronomy, no? Deuteronomy is when they were perched on the eastern side of Jordan, preparing to go into the promised land which God had promised. They haven't even gone in. God said, one day I want to scatter you. That's, of course, what God knows. So I will scatter you. Then, verse 34, Then the land shall enjoy its Sabbath, as long as it lies desolate, and you are in your enemy's land. Then the land shall rest and enjoy its Sabbath. You understand? God knew in advance that you will not give the land a rest. I will scatter you, then the land will have its rest. As long as it lies desolate, it shall be, it shall rest. For the time it did not rest on your Sabbath when you dwell on it. For the time you, it did not rest on your Sabbath. That means, how many Sabbaths you miss, huh? that will be the number of years you'll be out there. Out. To give the land a rest. Because what you sow is what you will reap. You cannot cheat God. So, we look at Jeremiah chapter 25. Jeremiah 25. 
verse 9 to 12. Jeremiah 25, verse 9 to 12. Okay, let me read from verse 8. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will set and take all the families of the north, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land. God called Nebuchadnezzar his servant. He can use anyone. Against this land, against its inhabitants, and against these nations all around, and will utterly destroy them, and make them an astonishment, a hissing, a perpetual desolation. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of millstone and the light of the lamp. But all, all this means good times, huh? of food, huh? eating, huh? preparing. And when we come to Jeremiah 25, I will explain more. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and this nation shall serve the king of Babylon. How many years? 70 years. 70 years. God knew the, the number in the month. Shall serve the king of Babylon. 70 years. You jump to Jeremiah. Okay, before that, verse 12. Then it will come to pass, when 70 years are completed, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans for their iniquity, says the Lord, and I will make a perpetual desolation. So today, today where are the Babylonians? Okay, okay. Now, Jeremiah 29, verse 10. Jeremiah 29. This 29 chapter is Jeremiah's letter to the exile. Now, the, the prophet was writing a letter to the exiles in uh, Babylon. All the Jews were there. He wrote a letter to them. For thus says the Lord, verse 10, After 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. Is this good news or what? Excellent news. After 70 years, I shall visit you and bring you back to the place. To here. That's where they want to be. And so Daniel the prophet, who went in the first deportation, he went and he served the king of Babylon, prime minister and so on, right? And so he also had his own Bible study. So when he read, like what I just pointed to you, Leviticus 25, Leviticus 26, Jeremiah 25, Jeremiah 29. Hey, you see, hey, I was a teenager when they brought me here, Babylon, and now come, 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 hey, 70 years coming up. He knew according to God's word, the exile is going to end. And that was how he, I mean, his ministry and so on. So, now we go back to Chronicles 36. So, if you don't believe in God, not something wrong with him, something wrong with you. All of this will all pan out. All God, God and author that is the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. So, as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath. She lay desolate. No, they ignored, you go and study the history, they ignored this keeping of the Sabbath for 490 years. So, 490 years, you take every 70 years, must have a break, right? So, 7 times 70. That's why they had to go, take a break, leave the land. For 70 years. So between verse 21 and verse 22 of chapter 36 is a gap of how many years? Jesus, 70 years. 70 years. Because now we read, now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, 
That means what? What happened to Babylon? Gone. History. So, it is 17. Now, like God said, he will dispose of the king of Babylon. And the Persians came, took over. So, 70 years have gone. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, also and also put it in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord God of heaven has given me, and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is among you of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. And this, this book ended on a bright note for the people. Let us go up. The word in, in Hebrew, Aliyah. If you go to Israel, Aliyah. You know, the, 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 you know, every year the man got to go to Jerusalem three times to worship at the temple, right? So every year they will always say, this year, if for those who, for whatever reason, they can't make it, okay, this year, Galilee, for example, I'll just say, this year, Galilee, but next year, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. This year, wherever they are, but next year, Jerusalem, Aliyah. Let's go up, go up to Jerusalem. Now, God was using a Gentile king to fulfill his word through Jeremiah. He gave the word through Jeremiah, and yet he was using he was using a Gentile king. It is the grace of God that God will stir. His spirit. I mean, Babylon, Persian. You you can't think that. I mean, one is bad, and suddenly the other one is so good. I mean, what what changed him? What transformed him? Let's turn to Daniel chapter one. He must have repented. Then I mean, something must have happened to him. Okay, Daniel chapter one. Verse 20. Okay, let me read from verse 18. Now, chapter 1 of Daniel. Now, at the end of the days, when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in Nebuchadnezzar, before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all None was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. Therefore, they served before the king. That means Daniel and his three friends served before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the musicians and astrologers who were in, his, who were in all his realm. So this Jewish fellows, and these four, they are very smart, super intelligent. But I point you to verse 21. Thus Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. He continued until the first year. I mean, he is quite old by now because as a teenager, he went in the first deportation. And then now, after 70 years, quite old. But until the first year of King Cyrus, scholars concluded that he, as the Prime Minister, someone very high up there, he must have influenced King Cyrus. He must have shared the scripture with King Cyrus. Hey, you know, the Holy Scripture said at the end of 70 years, uh, this Babylonian king, uh, will go away and you will come. Indeed, you have come. Yeah. And we will be free to go home to 
Jerusalem. He followed. Someone must have. Because this King Cyrus and didn't go to Bible school. No. He didn't go see the God. What does he know about the history of Israel? So someone must have told him. So for you, for me, wherever we are placed in the marketplace, in society, in wherever, don't think you don't have a ministry. You have a ministry. As, the, as you allow and avail yourself to the Lord, He will use you, whether in politics, in, in, in business, in, in, in ministry or wherever, yeah, to influence the Gentiles or the people who are pre-believers. Okay? So, this last few verses of chapter <coughs> of chapter 36, we will find them repeated even as we begin the next book, Israel. So I will highlight a few other things when we are there. But as we end chapter 36, you want to see the extent, you want to see the extent of uh, the Persian Empire. They are all in green. Almost open. Right? Okay. World power. See, Egypt wanted to fight against Babylon together with Syrians, but anyway, all lost. So now the Persian. Big, no? Bigger than Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> so, come. So, Father, we will just want to thank you.